Hi folks, welcome to The Breaky. My name's Henry, and today we're going to further process our lines of input, our custom ROM. Um, so when last we left our heroes, we were able to put lines of input onto the screen. Uh, we were able to type them, we were able to scroll the screen. You know, things in that nature were going, were going pretty well. So that's all well and good. We can put stuff in, but we can't do anything with it yet other than look at it, and uh, yeah, it's pretty to look at, but I want to kind of like have it do stuff. Okay, great. So for that to happen, we're going to have to do a few bits of wonderment and possibly uh, magic that involve such things as token processing. And I've got a little bit of a laundry list of things that we're going to get done in order to make that work and for us to actually see something happen. Well, we might or might not actually see it happen on the screen. It may only be happening on in the memory window in MAME, but you know what? It's going to be happening. So I put a little bit of a reminder of what we're doing off to the side over here. I'm going to turn and look at that for a minute. And let's see, the first thing that it says is realign the variable space. Then after that, it's got set up token process and set up the initial dictionary. And then it's got error handling. Okay. Looks like it's going to be a fun time today, right here on the break key. The first thing we're going to do is um, realign the variable space. Okay, so all these equates, um, I, was given the, I was given the advice to turn these equates into RMBs. And that's just reserve multiple byte. And that's actually relatively simple. If we set our org here from the 0800, um, which I'll go ahead and skip forward a bit and move that to after the RMBs. Da, 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 there we go. Um, if we set our org here, 200 hex, now all I have to do is an RMB. Uh, it was in the Okay. We're looking at eight bytes, so that's going to be an RMB eight. Now zero eight hundred at the or a zero a zero hundred at the top of this. We'll put those constants and constants. Constants are constant, therefore they can be in ROM, and that's taken care of. Now what else do I have? Or directive after RMB. Okay, great, that's wonderful there. And let me go ahead and mark this. I don't have anything else for 0200. Good. So that's all that we've got for that. That's taken care of. Now, token processing is 0300 to 03FF. Right. So, on further reflection, as you may or may not have noticed a little bit of a jump up there. Um, in any base that we might put together, the number of digits that are going to be used are, in, are necessarily going to be less than the number of digits used in the lowest radix we have available to us. And the lowest radix we have available to us is radix 2. So if we're using radix 2 as our lowest available radix, the number, maximum number of digits is going to be along the lines of 16 to 32. So I shouldn't need more than a 32, uh, than 32 characters for a number. Now, that said, the memory configuration that we're going to be using for our word, for our dictionary, I'm pulling up from this uh, little thing that I found at arduino4th.com. Right? Yep, right there. And I'm looking at a one byte, uh, a one byte word for, or one byte uh, item for the name field address. And the, this field has a constant one at the top, it has three flags available for it, and then it's got four bits available for the length of the word itself. So the word length is going to max out at 16 characters. Therefore, I only need. I only need 32 characters for the purposes of our uh, our token size. Now we're only going to we're only going to deal with uh, tokens one at a time. We're not doing the whole line. We're going to break the line up into its individual tokens and, and process each one one of those separately. Okay, so this whole thing right here, that's going to be 
a never mind. Having done that, we can now move the text screen to 300. I am putting the parameter stack up towards the top of first 32K, up at the top of the first 32K. I figured that's going to be mo the easiest place to put it. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think I can do that. I really don't think. Okay. Because it's, uh, right, it's half K increments, 400 is 1K, and so it can only move by 200, so I can't put it at 3. Okay, that looks like it takes care of it. Should have done it, right? Okay. So, we on the variable space. We made sure that everything is um, set up with the equates. And set the bottom user tax uh, to 8,000. All right, that's been taken care of. Okay, so just to make sure that everything is still doing what it's supposed to be doing, I'll move this off to the side. All right. Beautiful. All right, so that's working quite well. And I didn't mess anything up, it looks like. Good. So now uh, we can move on to the next one, which is to set up token processing. This happens after the enter is pressed and tokens are processed a token at a time, not a line at a time. All right. So, and see, this is the part where where... The code gets dangerously close to being a plate of pasta. I got to be real careful with this one because there's not much I can do. I mean, assembly language is a bunch of go to's and conditional go to's. There do exist go subs, but it's kind of just a go to that pushes something on the stack, and when you hit the return, it just pulls it back onto the stack. So, yeah, it's everything in assembly is go-tos. Procedural, um, you know, doing things procedurally, you kind of got to make it happen yourself. What do I mean kind of? You do have to make it happen yourself. There's no real concept of a function call in assembly language or a procedure call in assembly language. The closest you've got is JSR, jump to subroutine. And yeah, so I don't want this turning into like Red Sauce Tuesday, um, nor do I want it to be like a plate of you know, broccoli cheese Alfredo from your favorite Italian place. I might like those to eat. I don't like them when it comes to how my code logic works. And this is already getting kind of iffy, kind of difficult to follow. So I've got to be really on top of making sure that I'm doing calls that can be traced and that I know what's going on with it. Now, I already know what's going on with this. Everything here is fine. It's working fine. I'm not getting stack overflows. I haven't lost track of things yet, but it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's, I'm in the danger zone and I need to avoid that. Okay. So how am I going to avoid that? I'm not going to wind, I'm not going to bother with trying to put the procedure that I'm going to work on, in this case, the token processor. I'm not going to try and put that physically close to, um, the, the location it's going to be called from. Okay. 
I am coming in here knowing that we've already pushed D. And I think those are important. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and do, did I, I did not set up, where did I set that up? I need to set that up. I forgot to set that. Uh, let's see, oh, do you have, um, I want to pull a trick here. I really want to pull a trick here. But I'm not going to. What I wanted to do was I wanted to use a little bit of self-modifying code to automatically, you know, pass a parameter to the error handling function rather than unroll the stack myself before going to the error condition. Um, I may yet still have to do that, uh depends on where I handle the trapped error and how I deal and how I deal with the trapped error. So error handling something that I'll go into a bit more deeply later, but for right now I think I'll just um unroll it throw uh unroll it throw the message up there and and just call it done. Um but I'll have something else throw the message. I'll figure that out at a later time. So All right, we'll use that. That's that'll work for now. Um That should take care of that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this real quick. It seems to assemble fine. Assemble fine. Nothing's complaining about being too far away. Referenced okay. Yeah, let's call it there. So I'm going to call it here for the evening. Um, see what happens tomorrow after work. So let's see.
go ahead and open this up. And the other thing that I want to look at is the listing. Bottom, and it is at 834. Oh, right. Okay, that's what I was doing. All right, now that makes sense. So I'm going to run this. It looks like I've got an error in here where I'm actually... Where I actually do not have an RTS. This is a load X, load Y, load A. To... Oh, no, there's an RTS. Okay, no, there's my RTS. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Because here I need to make sure I do a, J, uh, do a pull S. Okay, if I do this right. So it's over here. Got it. All right, we're good. Well, if I do this. Ah, nice. All right. All right, so we have X and Y contain 207 and and uh, 404. So let's let me look for a minute here what's going on with this. 404. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. 208 is the current cursor. Yeah, previous cursor. Okay. And OA is the current cursor. Okay, I see another error that I did. All right, so I need to put here. All right, so I want to load X with the value at previous cursor. And I want to load Y with, no, actually I do want to load Y with token, but with that value right there. And... Yes, I do. That I want the value, this one, that I want value. Okay, there we go. Ah yes, the cursor delay, and then that starts the token buffer. Gotcha. All right, now it makes now it makes a little more sense. Okay, so here. Okay, so definitely have a problem here. Um, I've got two problems. So the first problem is that it's not seeing the end of it's not seeing the end of the line. It's getting to that's why. Okay, so I actually need to put that at um, well a twenty six a. Didn't I set that at a twenty six a? No, I didn't. All right, so it actually got there. And if I look at this memory, yep, okay, so that should work. So let's do this. Now the next trick is going to be testing out Okay, that's all on one line. All right, so we've got the stop there. Okay, so we're not skipping, and I see what's going on there. So this is not skipping. This is not skipping the spaces. 
So at the end of that, when I RTS from the PRO or from the PROC TK, what I need to be doing, let's see, compare X curse her uh, PROC TK. When I RTS from that, I think, I think, I think that'll do it. So let me double check this logic here. Okay, so, and we go back to B, so I should be loading that with the token buffer. Let's check this again. All right. And again, I'm going to set my All right, and I get the air condition showing right here. All right. That looks good. And I should, let's see what I've got in here. I've got a lot of stuff in there and it just gave up on me. Lovely. All right, so token, the token search works. Got that going and I'm going to hang up for a little bit. All right, so. We've got the to we've got the line processed and we're getting individual tokens out of it. This is good. Fine. So we've got that happens after enters press, tokens are processed, token at a time, and a line at a time. Great. And we're going into. Ah, so now we need to set up the initial uh, dictionary. And that's going to be, let's see, static location for the start of the dictionary, define ROM location for words. Um, using all word as a last word. Okay, so I'm going to change this around because I was thinking earlier on that. Using a null word is going to be just plain um, silly. So I'm going to put a bottom of list. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to put the top of the list. Okay. And adding a word. Okay. New words are added to the top of the dictionary. Now, this is actually going to be simpler than it looks like, at least when writing the ROM. For right now, and I'm going to take a look at my listing and see how much... Okay, I have plenty of room. So I'm going to start the dictionary. I'm going to put the first words at B1000, I think. we'll. So, static location for the start of the dictionary. We're going to start the dictionary. At the bottom of the dictionary is going to be at B1000. So... Okay, that's what I was going to do. EOT buff, we're going to change that. And we're going to make this... Uh... All right, that's going to be the top of the dictionary. Great, so we've got the top of the dictionary set up there, and I'm going to set up my words at B1000. Let's look at this and see what we need to Top of dictionary reported and loaded into RAM. New words are added to the top of the dictionary. The words we're starting with. Depth, which is proper number of RAMs, plus and dot emit to emit the top of the stack. I might skip just emitting the top of the stack and just go with depth and uh, plus. So I know that I need depth. Oh, right, 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 right. I forgot. I completely forgot about the dictionary format. Okay. So the dictionary format. I think I may have mentioned this before. We've got our name field. We've got the name itself. We've got the um, or the name field, which includes the metadata and the name itself. We've got the link field, and we've got the 
code field. So what I'm going to do is what's shown down a little farther on this, where the link field actually comes before the name field. So this makes things a little bit simpler. The link field is going to be the link to the next item in the dictionary. So the next item in the dictionary being the next one lower. In this particular case, that's going to be an RMB, um, let's see, now that's going to be a uh, uh, F, ah, yes. So now we've got the, okay, so this is, in this particular case, now let's go over this again one more time. Immediate inline compile only, those are the flags. All right, so let's look at what these flags actually mean. If it's immediate, then that means we can use it in the immediate mode. If it's in line, that means that we don't jump to it. We actually build it out and use this as inline code where we'd otherwise put it. And if it's compile only, it's not usable in the immediate mode. So, at least that's what I understand the case to be. Our length is going to be four bits, which is going to be a maximum of 16. A number of 16, so it's going to be one plus whatever that is. For the words we're going to be working with at this stage, they're going to be immediate. And so we've got a one, one, which is going to be an eight, nine, A, B, C. So that's going to be eight C. Yep. That's going to be a C as the first nibble. And then the length is going to be the length of the word. So in this case, we're looking at depth. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be a. Now, we haven't done ASCII translation, and it looks like we're not going to do. And it looks like for right now, I'm not going to do ASCII translation. I want this to read depth. So I'm going to cheat. And the way that I'm going to cheat is I'm going to come over here and do F5. Just going to put that in there. And I'm going to look at what this is. Four, five, ten, fourteen, eight. Okay, there we go. And so now, here's how this is going to work. What we're going to wind up doing is we're going to go to, we're going to come here, and when we want to execute it or include it, we're going to figure out the address by taking this address here, and then adding in two bytes, and then this value right here, we'll end that with at 0f, add that into our value, and then we'll bring that in. So now, now comes the code, now comes the code itself. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yep. Okay, so this is correct. All right, so here we have the code for depth. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this over and make the corrections.
and then a simple RTS. All right, so this should give us depth. So I'm going to test this. Oh, no, 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 I forgot about this. There we go. All right, so then what I'll do over here. I should be able to run the make now. And it So now I should be able to. Okay, nothing went awry. It worked. Right, okay, yeah, 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 because it's pushing those two, uh, two items on there. It's giving me a depth of five, which is absolutely correct. That is absolutely correct. Okay, beautiful. Now I need what I want to do is define the process for looking for the word and then looking for the number. The first bit is going to be finding the word. And what I'm going to need to do in order for that to occur is I'm going to need to define the location, which I've already done, dick top, okay, RMB2, and I'm going to need to put that value in the location. So over here in dick.s, or I'm sorry, in the boot sequence. So I should be able to Oh, let's see. That worked. That's exactly what I needed to do. And with that being with that being set up. Oh dear, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a I need that to be an RMB2 because I'm gonna have trouble. Okay, so that's gonna be in the boot sequence. which is correct, and we'll store that at 22. Uh, Beautiful. So that's good. We've got the top of our dictionary. Here's what I'm getting at with that. If we look at our dictionary, and actually I'm going to go ahead and move this over here right now. Uh, if we look at how we're defining the dictionary, byte zero, byte one, and byte two. So that's going to be zero. Uh, let's see. I believe it's going to be, yep, two comma X. I need that to be two comma X. That's going to contain the, the field. Load X with dick top. We've got the current, uh, we've got the first dictionary item. What did we have in here when we came in here from proc to, uh, from, from, um, Process the token came in here from process the line. When we hit process token, um, which one are we looking at? Have we come to a space yet? We are looking at, ah, yes. Y. Y has, that has what we're going, that has what we're looking for there. Okay, so. Now, here's where this comes in, all right? Why, oh, no, that's not gonna work because why isn't starting at a zero hundred amount there? Because I, uh, that's, isn't starting at a zero hundred. So what I actually need
All right, so I've got something that I can test here, it looks like. Let's see if it assembles. Doesn't like it. 366 invalid number of arguments. Oh, that's right. I can't do... It has to be the JSR. It's the jump, not the branch, that lets me do that. Okay. I think. Is it? Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, it's not even L for that one. It's just a JSR. Okay. That should that should work then. Let's try and let's go ahead and give that an assemble. Okay, that assembled correctly. Let's run it. Oh, 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 okay. Hang on. I just noticed an error. I was looking at the listing on the other side to see why that didn't look right. And this is why that didn't look right. Because I put here an FCB instead of an FDB. And yep, that looks correct. That looks much more correct. All right. So now we do a... Make run on that. Ah, yes, I did that before I compared the uh, compared the actual string. All right, so. Roll cue that. I forgot string comparison. Okay. Okay, so that should take care of that. This happens when I assemble it. 74, it doesn't like that with a syntax error. Oh. There we go. Now let's try it again. All right, and I need to be.
I don't even know why I did that. That can be safe. I'll, I'll deal with that later. All right, so this, this right here, that's, that's silly. I'm going to fix that. Okay, it did. It definitely did. It told me that my depth is zero. So if I go ahead and run this again, I should see it uh see it see it go to one. Let me F5 this. All right, you're running. Five again, I should see. Lovely. It's working. <laughs> It's working now. All right. The next trick is going to, uh, the next trick is going to be possibly doing some addition. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to have error, error checking on this. So, That will work, okay, and then what we'll do. Good, good, good. I'll take care of that. So now, and that should work. I'm going to go ahead and check the assembly. All right, everything looks good. Let's run it. Now, it should find it. Like it did. Yep, it sure did. And now it should give me an error condition because it doesn't have. Oh, it went to depth. Right, 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 right. I forgot about that. All right. So now, if I pull that into D, it should show me zero, which it does. Nice. And I made another error. All right. So let's go ahead and control. Run. Good. All right. So this is what I'm testing. It's going to find the first, it's going to, it's got to skip the first one. I haven't chest tested the skip yet. All right. So that's working. And now if I go over here, it should find it. Now, if I hit plus again, I should see a one at the bottom of the... Oh, right, right, right. This will, So this will give me, a, this is gonna give me a depth of one is what it's gonna do because what I've got here is U is seven FFE. Now, if I were to adjust that to a different number, then it'd be fine. All right, so I see what's happening here. It appears to be working so far. So before I can really test that, I'm going to need to be able to put numbers onto the stack, which I will do after uh, this. After these messages, we'll be right back. So let's try this. Um, set these in memory, and I'm going to go with... Um, Good. All right. So that should do it. And I should be able to go ahead. I should be able to run that now as well as.
Oh, shoot. That's the wrong stack. Okay. I need to fix that. No wonder. OQ there. And let's get this fixed. Because that's not supposed to be comma S. That's supposed to be comma U. There we go. Pull U. Add D. I'm a U plus. And that should be a push U D. There we go. Good. And it's in the correct place. You correct thing. Uh, branch always. Okay. Pulse D. RTS. Five from here. We're just running right along. Beautiful. Absolutely. Rabjous. Okay. So we've done that. Now the next thing that we need to do. Next thing that we're going to need to do. We've got the depth. Um, we got the plus add two sixty bit integers, and dot is emit the top of stack. All right, I can give this a shot. I can actually give this a shot. Eventually, I want to look at it, but I'm not going to look at it just yet. I'm going to first. I'm going to do number processing, as in like taking a token and turning it into a number. So in order to do that. Here's the fun part about fourth. Fourth will handle on its uh, well, fourth will handle bases anywhere from base two to base thirty six. So to kind of future proof it, what I'm going to do is set up a variable, a system variable that has the uh, let's see where I'm. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Okay, a system variable that has the current radix actually, you know, the current radix actually set. So in this case, okay, and that I'm just going to, for the time being, hard code this value in there. Now, it's going to stay hard coded, but later we'll be able to change it. Okay, there's that. So now let's look at number processing. This should, should be relatively simple. I'm going to need an accumulator. That is not the D register. So let's see, we're coming on down here. Process the line. Okay, and let's see, process the token. We're search DC. Search DCT goes ahead and um, pulls S and D. And carry clear means the word wasn't found. If the word wasn't found, then we're going to try and see whether or not this is actually a valid, you know, character with, uh, or this is going to be a valid number. So, okay, now this is where the fun begins. So if I come down here to proc, um, Can straight up use the parameter stack for this because it's not like I'm looking for a it's not like I'm looking for a temporary variable that I'm using on the parameter stack. This is going to wind up on the parameter stack anyway, so why not? Okay.
effectively what's happening is no matter what the base i'm multiplying by a by not a single digit i'm multiplying by the radix Now, at this point, we have the option for processing an overflow. Um, and what I'm looking at with that is register A. Register A should have a zero value in it. So, Radix should have left the image B. And then all I need to do is All right, and now for the error condition. Ah, that'll just give me a little visual indication. So this should be ready to go. Let's do try the assembly. And an invalid addressing mode on 395. What's going on with you? We already know that our token processor works. Yeah, so it found it. It just had nothing to do. No wonder it didn't give me any issues. So let me try... Okay, let me look at that again, because this if this is doing the air condition I think it's doing. Yep, that's what it's doing, what I think it's doing. Okay, so that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to unroll the stack on the air, uh, the parameter stack on the air condition. So let's go ahead and get back over here. Although, let me look at this for a second. I'm going to assemble this in D, because I'm restoring D anyway. And I want to see... Actually, let me go over here. That's D. 3342. And how many... Per cycles, 4 plus number of bytes, 2 plus. Okay. So, that's going to be 4 plus cycles as compared to if I do a pull S. Okay, that's quicker. And that should fix it. So let me go ahead and assemble. So at, okay, that shows me an error and utility 8,000. Beautiful. All right, so now I've got to look, and now I've got to debug the math. All right.
No wonder that's happening like that. I did it backwards. I've got my logic absolutely backwards. Oh! You have got to be kidding me. I did that. I did that. I absolutely did that. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's control Q this because I got that so backwards it's not even funny. All right. So let me see what I'm going to do about this because I was thinking that I was going to be, you know, just, you know, all clever by going backwards, but by going from uh, right to left in this, but it doesn't work that way when I'm using this kind of logic. So we still get the digit, load B, negative Y. What I'm going to need to do, I'm not using X in here at all. So what I'm going to do is load X with the token buff. Okay, so now what we're going to do is load B, comma, X plus. There we go. Get the character, we do all that. All right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then we're not going to do a compare Y, we are going to do a compare X. And now this is going to be a little bit of a problem because I can't directly compare X and Y. Nope, it only did the first digit. All right, so it didn't make it past that first digit. So let's see what's going on with you. D, all right, breakpoint one is set. Five. All right, oops, that was not. There we go. Four, five, all the way to that, and we'll see on the stack. Now this one only. Oh no no no, that's correct. Four hundred hex. Yes. Okay. So now let's try seven seven two three five. Uh, let's try six five five three five. F five that. Okay. Let's see if it's happy. Oh, no, 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 it was perfectly happy. Duh, F, 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 F. Come on. Oh, right, because it's an error condition. Okay, never mind. Okay, that's why it's doing it. Now you makes now it makes perfect sense. I think it makes perfect sense at any rate. Okay, yeah, because we got an overflow or what have you, so, all right. So I didn't, there's some error items that I didn't take care of over here. Let's see, search dictionary. And now at the end of Wait a minute, we branch if the carry's clear, if the carry's set. Uh, no, okay, got it. All right. I swear, I can't figure out my own logic. This is, at least I've broken it down somewhat. It's not as pasta as it used to be. Okay.
that should solve the problem, and that should solve the problem that I was having. So if I save this and I assemble it, oh, one more thing that I want to do real quick, and, and that's in the digits. If I see foo, got the air condition. Good. Now, depth was a zero, uh, okay. And then if I do a 65535 plus, that should go back to F. Yes. <laughs> good, 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 good. This is going very nicely as far as I'm concerned. All right, now in this particular case, I believe if I do a one plus, this should roll over to zero. I don't get any type of error condition other than the one that was already there. Um, and it does roll over to zero. Nice. Beautiful. Absolutely stupendously, amazingly wonderful. This is doing pretty much exactly what I wanted it to do. Now for a test, just to have fun. Oh, that's right. Okay. Just to have fun. Let's go ahead and see what I can do about this. All right, plus is coming back with. Oh, right, right. Plus comes back with that error condition. Oh, right. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. It's supposed to come back with that error condition. Because it's not a valid number. Okay. So it didn't find it. So it has to check it for a number. That's right. That's what fourth does. So if I put uh, 16 base in there, that seems to be working. And if I look over here, Bob's your uncle, there it is. And if I put FAC in here and come on over to my, there it is. Plus, Okay, FBDD looks correct. Okay, awesome. So a little extra, even though I didn't get the even though I didn't get the dot going. That kind of makes me happy. Yes. <laughs> All right. We have token processing. We have like recognizing words and recognizing numbers, or at least in base two, ten, and sixteen. But if it works for those three, who knows? Maybe it works for the rest of them. And we have it's it's a working infrastructure for a fourth for a fourth implementation. The nice thing is all the math stuff is going to be so ridiculously easy um to just to implement, including like negations, complements. The only thing that's going to be fun that's going to be interesting, um, well, that's going to be potentially difficult is going to be division. And well, multiplication is going to be relatively easy. I think I'm going to have to look into that one. Yeah, we're going to have to look into that. The reason multiplication might be difficult is because I'm not dealing with 8-bit uh, bit operands. I'm dealing with 16-bit operands. And those 16-bit operands, of course, are going to multiply to a 32-bit number. And the multiplication does funky things in my brain as it moves around because I'm not dealing with a single digit. Um, so, and if I'm dealing with a 16-bit number, multiplying a... 8-bit number by a 16-bit number looks like it's pretty simple. You multiply this, you multiply this, and you bump it over. So, yeah. 
we're gonna have to figure this one out. But that's for later me, and for later us. So thanks for joining on the break key today. It's been an interesting time putting all this together, and I'm glad you've been here with me. Hope you enjoyed everything that's going on. Um, you know, like, share, subscribe, and have an absolutely wonderful day. And I'll see you next time right here on the break key.